Anthony Ferraro and Mancina, two blind guys, collide to bring you Four Bad Eyes Podcast. One. Hey! Studio Four. Okay, relax, relax. <sighs> keep it down, guys. Keep it down there in the back over there. Everyone over there, keep it down. This is the new studio. Yeah, we're... Four, Studio Four Bad Eyes. Call in, tell us what you think. Yeah, we should get a Google Plus number so people can call in and leave voicemails and we can Ooh, play them over the app. That'd be nice. So, I think that'd be fun. Yeah, we should do that. I heard that before. It's yeah, that'd a good be fun. one. Yeah, so we're going to get a phone number and you guys could start calling in and leaving voicemails and we'll answer your questions live when we play them. Uh, I guess it wouldn't be live, but, but yeah, we're here and it's a. It's a beautiful sunny day in Michigan. The sun is melting. Everyone, <laughs> make sure you like and subscribe right away. Smash that button. <laughs> and share. Ham horn. <laughs> share that. Yeah, we're here. Sucker. We're, we're here. We're blind. We're still blind as crippled. can be. Um, More crippled than ever. <laughs> Amputee. I am crippled. I got freaking... I got... I got coping to the ribs last night. I'm all bruised up in different ways. I'm a little sore. Yeah. Long skate sesh uh, oh, from man. ten to three. Ten to three. That was a freaking session. Five hour sesh. It's a good sesh. That was a good sesh. Well, two, I only I only went ten to one thirty. Two hours of that sesh was trying to battle one trick. Yeah. Um. Good times yeah, though. That was that was that fun. George Modern? Shout out to Modern. In okay. Royal Oak. George Leakwees. Leakwees. Um, out in Royal easy. Oak. Uh, full skate shop. Giant. Huge indoor park. Giant. Huge. You can skate it every day of the week, baby. And uh, George is the man. He opens it up to us after hours so we don't have to be so overwhelmed with mm-hmm. the chaos. Probably one, Maybe probably the episode after this one, we're going to have George on here. He's about to head over interview. So He's going to be on one. That's Look out for, for that. Sure. <coughs> got chicken dumpling stoop on the simmer. It's a stewing, baby. Stewing that brewing roux. Stew that roux. I learned about roux today. Roux, it's, roux, it's roux, boy. <laughs> <laughs> roux, boy. Roux, boy. Give it up. Rihanna, pregnant. Is she? Oh, yeah. She yeah, announced she it at announced. the old Super Bowl, Leo. Yeah, people were... Uh, Saying like Super Bowl of soup, people were saying, I can't believe Rihanna's pregnant while the Super Bowl halftime show was going on. And half the people, half the masses thought that it was uh messed up. People were saying that that she just had a baby and she was just still had some of that weight. And half the masses were like, No, it's her pregnancy announcement. And then her agent had to confirm that it was oh. a pregnancy announcement on Twitter. Riri? This was Riri? Riri. I didn't watch the... I did not watch the Super Bowl this year. None of it? None of it. Why not, Dan? None of it. What were you doing? Where were you? I was moving in. I don't even think I had the TV set up. Mm. Moving into the new house. This is the new studio at the new house. Yeah, it's probably not new. By the time this episode comes out, we're going to be like (laughs) a few weeks in. But yeah, Yeah. it's new to us. It's new. It's still Still got that new new house smell. Oh, I didn't put the bench in here. Oh. Son of a nutcracker. I'm sorry. <laughs> Son of an onion. <laughs> so Joe always says. Son of an onion. Yeah, Son of an onion. Joe List. Um, Is it List or List? List, I think. L-I-S-T? Yeah, I believe so. Check the list. Check the list. I'm making it twice. But yeah, we've been... Uh, yeah, long sesh. We had um, Nick Mullins, another blind skater. We had Shane Brigham's... Adaptive skater. Adaptive uses crutches. I'm um, sure you heard that episode. And then Parker. Parker was And Parker had a little ripper from Traverse. Doing freaking... Peter Parker, a little Kate. Spider-Man. <laughs> he was hopping we all around started, that park. Yeah, we started calling him Spider-Man. He was using his webs to go from... I like, want him to hang upside down and kiss me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Parker. I think I... You kissed I, him? No. I, <laughs> I wonder if I, you think you were? Uh, <laughs> I wonder if I ever kissed someone upside, upside down. down. Yeah, yeah, I have like in bed. You know what I mean? Like yeah. saying bye to my lady or something. Oh, upside, upside down, upside down kiss or something. Yeah, you will upside down. That do have happened. Yeah. When I kiss Heather, sometimes I miss. 
you know? Miss the kiss. Like when she's in bed sleeping and I kiss her goodnight or something, I'll like hit an eyebrow. Yes. You ever hit the <laughs> eyeball? Eyeball. Oh, yeah. Eyeballs. <laughs> I have balls. Balls. I wish I had two of good ones of those. Those are always fun. We get like a little wet, snotty nose kiss too sometimes. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Mine is, I Salty. feel bad for Kelly because she'll go to kiss me. And when my beard is long, my mustache, it's Can't got the find resi- those lips. No, it's got the residual fluid from whatever I drank, like water. <laughs> if I have a beer, it's game over. She won't even kiss it's got me. Got a couple of water droplets on there. Yeah. It's uh, it's good. Well, fl- they call it the flavor saver. Flavor saver. A mustache. I, I hate cookie duster. I hate having a mustache and dr- when I'm like, if I'm at a bar or something and I'm drinking a beer or, or any drink out of a cup, when I'm drinking, I feel it dripping down my mustache, and I feel like every time I have to wipe my mouth mm, after yeah. every well, sip. I, like, I got a big old nasty beard right now. I gotta think. You gotta let me shave it. To shave that. Gotta let me shave it. I'm afraid. No, I'm you're gonna, very you're gonna good. zip an eye. You're gonna zip a uh, zip an eyelash. No, a um, sideburn. You go too high. You don't want the sideburns off. No, you're gonna go. My beard's gonna be shorter than what my hair is right now. Yeah. So you're gonna go Let too me see high. Face. So you're gonna go too high. I hate people touching my face. Oh, you don't want it up here. Well, I do it up there, but you're gonna go too oh, high. And you're gonna go oh, into the hair. Okay. And then yeah. I'm gonna have this awkward. I don't even know, Stairway to Heaven or something stairway. going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's a Stairway to Heaven in uh, Hawaii. It's, it's like There's one in, uh, what is it they call what it? What is that song based on? They call it uh, Stairway to Heaven in, um, what is it? It's like Zion Park. Oh, Zion National Park to in like, Utah? I think it might go like to Arizona to Utah. Like There's like three um, like places you can hike. And they call it the Stairway to Heaven, too. Did you know, because we're blind, we can get into any national park for free? Mm. I didn't know this. Pro tip. I And you get to bring your guide, the driver. Really? Yes. I was going into Volcano National Park in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And as we're going through, we're about to, like, uh, she's like, he's blind. Is there anything? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, here you go. You don't have your card? They gave me a laminated card. That's free for life. It's lifetime, and you get to go to any national parks. No way. Yes. I think it might even work for other countries. I got to check that one. Do they have national parks in other countries? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. No, they got it. We're the only ones who did it. No way. I think so. Really? I could be wrong. Call in. Call in. No, Bam- no Banff's in America, right? That's Canada. Yeah, that's Canada. The national park? Yeah. Well, can- Canada, America, one and the same. America, Canada. Same continent. America, Canada. North America. Yeah, but it's different countries. It is different country. It's fact. It's, fact. it's true. True, true. I stand corrected. What is, uh, speaking of different countries, what's your favorite country you've been to? America. <laughs> One hundred percent. I mean, traveling, traveling, Switzerland, whatever country that is. Did you get chocolate? Is that in some country? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Switzerland's a country. Yeah, I got some um, chocolate. Yeah, I think about some Swiss chocolate, Swiss cheese, army knife, and all that stuff. Swiss cheese, Swiss cheese. Why does Swiss cheese have the holes? I I've heard this before, but really? I cannot remember. It's I, something the way it's fermented. It has some air. Molecule pockets of blindness in there, and then <laughs> the retina, get, the the retina, retina gets detached. Yeah, and then it just makes a little blind hole. Why? So it just grow. It makes hardens with the with, holes. Hardens with the holes. Yeah. It's so weird. And then when you slice it, it makes yeah. The little Love a good slice of Swiss cheese, mm. some ham, French onion soup. Are you a fan? I love French onion soup, but I don't think there's Swiss cheese on it. On top, there's that the, Swiss. Uh, yeah, it's hunk of Swiss and some croutons. I never knew that was Swiss. Mm, it gets all chewy in your mouth. It's I like know, and gum. the croutons become soft. So good. Oh, what are some of the weirdest texture foods that? You, do you have any foods you can't eat because of the texture, <sighs> or you that doesn't bother you? Mm, I don't like candy that's really sticks to your teeth. I hate that too. Like a. Even toffee is a little much Toffee's getting too stuck much. in your teeth. I don't really like the taste of toffee either. But like Laffy Taffy, something like that is a little much on my teethies. I know. I, I'm speaking of teeth. I got to go to the dentist. Same. I haven't been since high school. Are you serious? Yep. Oh, my God. And that was 2008. <laughs> that is not okay. Eight, 18, almost 20 years. 
Last time I was at I the dentist, go. I had to get a tooth ripped out, so I'm pretty traumatized. Yeah, I, I never story. went back and got the the cap or the filler, yeah. so I just have flesh there. Ooh, yeah, it's just flat. I'm cutting it right now. It's just flesh and open open tooth gap. You sound like straws. you talk like somebody I know, dude. Without any teeth. <laughs> <laughs> You ever notice a lot of skaters, like some of the older skaters now? You can hear it when they talk. Their teeth. You can hear some missing the teeth. Fi- the missing and the fake. Depending on where they are, yeah. Like Bam, oh, fake. Yeah, Bam. I can hear Bam's fake teeth. I don't. That's not. I don't think that's his teeth. He's always had that little bit. I think that's just his brain being so scrambled. Oh. He like slurs almost. Oh, that makes sense. I I've talked about this. I sound like that sometimes. Well, Especially like, when I first wake up, like I don't uh, you pronunciate se- or enunciate my words fully. It does sound like you have something in your mouth or something. I don't know. I just don't. Yeah, I, I used hate to, it. I used to think you had like a toothpick in or something. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> you, know, sure. you just sit like this. It's like I don't fully. My brain's moving faster than my mouth. You ever get those people we talk to and they have the voice and you? You just want to clear their throat for them. Mm-hmm. I hate that. That's one of my peeves. Is when people with it a, sounds like they got a big fat loogie in the back of their throat. Or if it's someone who has like the real like it sounds like it's a lot for them to talk. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to. <clears throat> yeah. Like come on, just <clears throat> give them the Heimlich. <laughs> Heimlich. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I voices. I, I uh. There was a Jewish rabbi who was choking one time, and I gave him the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> Made that joke up myself. Comedy. That's cancel. Good. Yeah, cancel culture. What yeah. about cancel culture? You think it's going to go away? Yes. When? I don't know when, but eventually it's it good. It's got it. They got to get tired of it, right? Some yeah. Like if you look at, but I think we'll be better off. For it, and hopefully it finds a nice balance. It'll, it'll. People will think before they act a little yes. more or speak. Get used to the new terms you can and can't use, and, and then it'll be a little more. And realize things are permanent, like yeah, like that you put out there, and not so sensitive to everything. Like I'm, like we said earlier, we didn't talk about it on here, but I'm surprised Jimmy Buffett hasn't been canceled yet. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Buffet. <laughs> They, uh, Just glad I don't live in a trailer. Yeah. Yeah, he does like Jamaican accents and stuff. And, oh, yeah, songs. that's what we were saying. Yeah, yeah cultural appropriation yes, with this whole white guy singing. Is What is that genre? Jamaican Caribbean music. Carib- yes. Jamaican. He's made a living off it. Steel drums and, and maracas. And do people get offended when you make those accents, you know? Yeah, when he kind of sings yes. with the the. Creel or whatever that is. I don't know what that is. Jamaican-y. Uh, yeah, it's more Jamaican-esque. Jamaican-y like crazy. Caribbean. Jamaican. Uh, yeah, he does get that accent, some of them songs. Yeah. It's, um, too much time on a boat by himself. <laughs> too much He's time disconnected. away. He's He needs to live in a trailer. He's got to keep it between the navigational beacons. Beacons. <laughs> um, <laughs> voices, though. Voices are really big for me. You know, big. You, it, it, it big Jerry. It it freaking it brings me to a person or away. From, like mm-hmm. it, some voices, you just like. I remember growing up, I would hear like a certain kid my age's voice. And I'd be like, that kid is cool. Sounds cool. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Were you like that? Even not blind. Yeah, a little bit. You're drawn to certain it's, people. Yeah. Like they have a swagger to them. Mm-hmm. And then you usually grow up, and those people become the biggest losers. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> yes. Tron, I was uh biggest loser. Great show. Wasn't it that? uh it's like overweight people yeah, battling out yeah, who loses uh, the most? Screech was on that. On the biggest loser? Yes, I think so. Did Screech get big? Screech got big. What's his name? Ron Jeremy? Ron Jeremy, I remember that. I thought that was like Oh, Ron Jeremy's not Screech, is it? He's no, no dusting something. That's okay. way different. Yeah, no. Ron Jeremy's a porn star. Oh, he. I remember seeing jail him now, on the big. He's on. He's in jail. Yeah, he's like uh, something with I don't even know underage girls or I don't oh, know. He pulled yeah, a Louie. Bad, bad. I pulled a Louie. Bad guy. He's a bad guy. <clears throat> um, speaking of comedians, 
Christ. I, I got to see Dan the other night. Lamort. Lam- Lamort. Incredible show. It Where was, it, I mean, dying. It was it's at crazy. Count Basie Theater called the Vol- Vogel Theater in Red Bank. Very renowned theater, and they had it like sold out. Nice. Sold it, out. it pretty much sold out. There was, was people up top, and it was it was a great show. It was headliner. Yeah, nice. I uh, I accidentally said I felt bad too, but like it was just part of his act. Uh, he said something, and I was like, like I was dying, and it was like a really like harsh joke, and he was, I was just like, oh my god, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, yep. Oh my God, that was an early one, but we're gonna get a couple of those this this show, folks. Mm. He's like, Jesus will start showing up too. People are gonna start saying mm. Jesus, and uh, but he had, a, he had nothing like live comedy. Yeah, it was really good. The, the crowd work. Uh, his fiance does a lot of crowd work, mm-hmm. which I like crowd work, but when it becomes a lot of your set, it seems like you're relying on that a little bit. But there are people that are very good at at crowd yeah, work. I think that's a thing. Between the comedians, if someone does too much cry work, they the uh, true comedians think it can be a little, um, little cheap, kind of, you know, mm-hmm. relying on that, like you said, as a crutch, as opposed to because like lot- truly <coughs> writing jokes yes. for the art form of writing a solid joke. Writing a joke is hard. You ever yeah, just try is. to think of like your own joke? It's Heimlich weird. maneuver. That's my <laughs> joke, dude. <laughs> Um, as good as I can get, though. Yeah, I used your joke the other night when I spoke. Mm-hmm. I spoke to. Uh, it was really cool. I spoke to 350 uh, students and teachers and parents. That was students that were leaving high school, transitioning out of high school, that were on the disability spectrum. Gotcha. So they were all different, like uh, people, you know, with really bad cognitive disabilities or mental or Mm -hmm. whatever it might be so that was tricky jay because i had to (laughs) i had to um speak with (laughs) i had to speak with uh people like murmuring and muttering like uh right a lot of like you know the any tourettes out there i don't know if there was tourettes (laughs) it would be hard to distinguish because Mm. there were some that were just very um multi disabled Mm. whatever you want to call it um that would a lot of LD. They'd be like mut- like murmuring or muttering like to themselves during gotcha. the speech. But really cool thing, you don't know that he... Uh, I-, I nailed it with your joke, though. <laughs> I did the Uber Uber driver, got the chuckle, and I was like, ah, I'm just kidding. Pause for a sec. I'm really a, sp- a pilot for Spirit Airlines. <laughs> it erupted, Jerry. It was, <laughs> it was laughter beyond belief. I felt like a comedian. Yeah. Because you get that... I see that addiction to comedy, like good where laugh. you where you control a room like that and just make them laugh. Yeah, because you always got to incorporate humor in your talking. Uh. I think it's a great icebreaker, and it's, I did the same thing for my best man speech for my cousin. It was memorable because I made everyone laugh hard. It's universal, like, uh, bring everybody together. Yeah, it's something like uh, most people search all around the world, far and wide, for their significant other. Jack just had to look down the street. Because they lived on the same street. My opener for my brothers was uh, got married to a young lady named Meredith. And I was like, Meredith is sweet and kind and she cares and she takes such good care of the kids. All this going on this long list. And I said, and that's really important because Alex does none of that. <laughs> that was a good thing. Is Alex good. is kind of known to be late. He's like the lazy black sheep of the family. So it was a little good, selfish. Good little zing there. Yeah. Yeah. That was my opener for that. Alex. <laughs> Best man speech. Do you write your speeches? <laughs> like like when you speak publicly. Like yeah, public who speaking. else would write them? No, do you you actually write speeches? Um, yeah, I have a th- very it's pretty solid outline, yeah. Oh, depending on where I'm going. I never write a speech. I've written one speech. Well, you have your like um, what's the word? Uh like your your outline or your true your guideline your yeah your do, talking points, but it's all up here. And, yeah, and right. Oh, you mean here. like physically write them? Yeah, like do you jot stuff down in Braille or something, or do you work on writing it? In out? the beginning, I had I did it straight off. Like my first speech, quote unquote speech, I did was at a um, OSB Ohio State School for the Blind OSSB, and. Uh, 
I had it fully written, headphone in my ear, and scrolling as I was talking. So listening to what I was going to say. Really? Yeah, that's like the first one I did. Was that, that, that would really throw me off. It was a lot, but then, you know, I had it down so well that I kind of just like, as soon as I heard the first two words of the sentence, you know what I mean? Then I knew what that sentence was pretty much. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of had oh, the first okay. two and then I would just talk over it. But yeah. Yeah, that would have, that would probably help if I had a few like, once you get to the next point, it's like, what is my just main thing case, I'm trying to drive in here too? Yeah, well, mine was more because I was so nervous in case I just fully blanked. Then I could just revert back to the thing. But I get really nervous before speeches. It's like I'm There's about to wrestle. A match. I haven't done one in a while. Yeah, I'd be really nervous going into a new one. Uh, but the four, the last time, I, the time before this, the, I did four in two days, four and it hours. really. <laughs> For bad speeches, it really uh, helped me kind of get it down, like mm-hmm. a really good outline to where I could mold yeah, it to any type of situation. Good. It's like doing multiple sets in the night. You exactly. Had it by the end of the night, be dialed in. Dude, we really got we got to do a two minute bit. We got to come up with something. <laughs> I'm down, dude. Yes, yeah, we. I I wrote one speech, and it was because normally it's like 30, 45 minutes, uh, dude. Lo- Sorry, go No, ahead. longest an hour. And then when I had to do the graduations, it's like a 15-minute speech, keynote. Uh-huh. So that is the most nerve-wracking for me, is the super short. Oh, Cause, really? Yeah, because you got to drive a lot in, a lot of meat on there in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I'm used to trying to draw it out for everything. I like a nice 15 to 25, then Q&A is really? money, baby. Yeah, 35 to Q&A is my favorite. Yeah. 35, like 20 Q&A. 15. I love that, yeah, he finished the speech, you're like, whew, and he just came I know. It was a breeze. q is fun. I, uh, yeah, once you get the clap after the the speech is done, you're like, whew, made it. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's really nerve-wracking. It's, I got, I got our icebreaker for our two minute when we come out, we come well, out together. Yeah. Walking in front or behind each other, and then first thing we say, blind leading the blind up here. <laughs> well, icebreaker. That's what my grandpa always says, because he's got one eye left. Blind, deaf, and dumb. Yep, 95. Blind and deaf. He wears those hearing aids that you can, like, hear yourself talking into Uh the hearing aid. You know those? They're so loud. (laughs) They're so strange. Hearing aids. Yeah, one day. My dad needs hearing aids, but he won't get them. Really? so annoying. Lou? No, my dad. That's my uncle. Uncle Oh, oh, Uncle Lou. (laughs) Matt. Matt. Matt Matt Mancina. Matt Sr. (sighs) Sorry. He, um... (laughs) Hey, he uh, he like even on the phone, he doesn't hear half of what you say. You gotta repeat yourself. Down, it's like get hearing aids. Dude. Oh, that's annoying. It's annoying for everybody else. I hate, I hate the yelling on the phone when you gotta yeah. yell. That's the worst. Is the phone in person is can be bad too. But he's the type of person who doesn't really care. So if he doesn't hear something, he just doesn't say that he didn't hear it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then it's just like. He just goes on with his day, and then it's like you talk about something later that you already said. And like, yeah, I already told you. You weren't you didn't hear me. That reminds me that I, growing up, you know, people say, oh, don't listen to your headphones too loud. You'll lose your hearing, blah, blah, blah. I kind of wish I listened to that advice. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish I preserved my hearing as much as I could have. Yeah. Like, I really do regret certain things. So, kids, if you're listening, don't blast that music too loud in your ears. Because now... I've gotten tinnitus before. You ever get that? Where your ears just constantly ring? Uh, yeah, constantly. Hey, they ring every now and then. It's but, not yeah. good. And yeah. it's from me playing gigs where I'm right by my amp. Oh, yeah. And the thing no, is blaring. You. And Oh, like after a concert? Yeah, you after yeah, I, I play to, a yeah. show or yeah. something, it's, it's really bad. And it, it kind of like, it makes you feel all weird, too. And I, I get really scared when that happens. I started using earplugs for, like, electric shows. For sure. And I wish I did that earlier. Yeah, I'm more sensitive to that now, and I'm, I wouldn't be afraid to pop in some earplugs. Yeah, because I used to be like, oh, I just want to hear my music so loud. You know, mm-hmm. you want to blast your guitar. And it really did do some damage. Like, oh, yeah. I can hear where I'm not, my hearing's not as good as it once was. Right. My hearing sucks, yeah. And that's not good when you're blind, Jerry. Yeah, I went to my buddy's show and I had to 
was like, I'm going to the back. This is too much, dude. Yeah. I'm not no, stand in front and, of this. And, you know. and these, that's another thing, is one of my peeves is where these freaking, I'll go to a show at a bar, and these bands, it's like they don't even realize how loud their shit is. <laughs> it's blaring, and it's like to the point where it's not balanced. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like an unbalanced show where you hear <laughs> one thing a lot louder than the other, yeah, yeah, and then you can't even hear the vocals. Yeah, I hate a live show where the vocals are drowned out by yes. the instruments. I hate that, and I'm very anal with like sound and very uh, anal, <laughs> very anal about sound and like tone, about like music especially, and even just being if I'm at a sh- if I'm speaking and the the microphone is not like very good mm-hmm. that really throws me off too oh yeah Not yeah giving right. a speech with when you can hear yourself amplified is a whole other bag of worms well it was even like we started podcasting <clears throat> listening to yourself in the headphones is weird like mm-hmm. that was weird and now it feels weird to not have it mm-hmm. like i my headphones fell off the other day and i was really discombobulated yeah it throws you off yeah. for a second yeah you're not hearing but hearing hearing can you important. hear me now can you hear me now, Mr. Krabs? We had a little bit of snow here. We built a couple snowmen. Um, I speared my snowman. Frolicked around. Nothing like tackling a snowman. Feels good. It does. And and when I, I nailed the middle uh, section, mm-hmm. and I went right through, and the bottom and top kind of toppled on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was very fun. The s- snow gets heavy when you build that. You got to lift that midsection up. You, you always do it a little too big, too. A boulder of snow is heavier <laughs> than it than it appears. It's because especially when you get that wet, damp snow. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, we had a little snowball fight. Uh-huh. Anthony <laughs> took me out. We had the beepers on we each other. We rematch. I think the snow is gone now. Yeah, <laughs> it was melting pretty quick. It's crazy how quick it melted. It comes and goes right now, yeah. Yeah, and it, it comes pretty hard. We don't usually have snow in March. We haven't had snow in March in a while. What, it stops by, like, February? Yeah, February's usually pretty heavy. And then maybe a little bit of getting in March, but we're getting along pretty far in to be getting, you know, we got, like, three, four inches the other day. That's kind of... Yeah, take that, global warming. A little more rare. But then we didn't have much snow during the... Like, February was warm. We didn't... That's normally the coldest, snowiest month of Michigan. We didn't have a lick of snow in Jersey this year. Not anymore, yeah. It was yeah, a warm it was month. bad. I really, uh, I mean, February, there are days where it was like high 40s, 50. That's like crazy. I think it's from the fumes from like Al Gore's private jets. Mm hmm. It's a lot of jet fuel burning. Jet fuel. Jet fuel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, normally February is my biggest ice fishing month. Remember, that's the only month I can ice fish, and I got, we got gypped this year. There's no ice on that lake. Can't wait to fish my new lake, dude. Oh, just dreaming of it. What do you think? It's uh, got a lot in there. I think we got good, good fishery. What's the over nice under from your last lake? Second cleanest lake in Michigan. Yeah, what bullshit is that? Sec- you can sounds, go drink water right out of that lake. Self-proclaimed. You can go drink water right on that Who lake. Who right measured now. the pollution? The DNR. Who's that? Department of Natural Resources. Yeah, I gotta have a word with them. Let's test it. They're tried true and. and Empirically sound. There's, <laughs> there's not very clean lakes in Jersey, I'll tell you that. And there's empirical evidence. That's what I was looking for. So, uh, not for long, though, with this Ohio what? train thing. Oh, did we get a spill again? You didn't hear about this? No, when did this happen? Uh, Maybe a month or so ago. It was like a big train wreck. A train had all this oil or gas or something, and it, it derailed or crashed. And uh, big spill, big spill. Apparently, there's you could see oil slicks in the rivers in Ohio. Like, if you throw mm-hmm. a rock in the river, it's yeah. just it uh, just bounces right off. <laughs> no, it does like the, the ripples where it's oil, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, that's nasty. They had to take Ohio spring water off shelves, mm. it's that bad. Yeah, and there bad. was uh. Apparently it was raining and this the rain was like suds, like Oof. when it hit the ground. Yeah, that's really bad. That stuff scares me a lot, dude. That and them trying to put gas lines through like right next to 
main water sources and all that crap, dude, is not good. Fracking. Yeah, and then you Just see- ruining our fresh water. Like, that's the most important thing in this world is our freaking fresh water. Uh, when everything goes to shit, you're going to need the fresh water. Let's hope we can keep Michigan clean, dude. Minus Flint. It's so close to Ohio, though. Yeah, I mean, Flint's even close. Oh, depending on where you are, but- yeah, Flint. That's the first. I went to when we were doing a cross country road trip. We stopped in Flint just because we passed it, and I got water from the gas station. Yeah. Um. No, but not good. It's and even in the oceans, they like by me. There's there's parts yeah. by the ocean where they just drain the sewage in the ocean. That's what they do. There's California one, just dumps it out in the ocean. Yeah. There's one surf break they call it shit break. Yeah, because shit, shit when pipe is shit pipe. Yeah, in shit Cali pipe. Too. When you when it rains, you could really smell it. Yeah, you can't go. It's surf. bad. I I've like almost gotten really sick from it because you Messy. you have to really do like a neti pot or something after you freaking dude. Well, and well, you go by like Chevron, the Chevron station in like El Segundo and stuff. Yeah, and there's like black sand from the oil like oh, right that's, off. That's, it's like, that's horrible. Yeah, and then you see these like barges of garbage in the ocean. Uh. Yeah, we're really doing a number on her. Yeah. If you could just go back. Did you check the time when we started? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Time check. Yeah, we um we're not yeah. doing good. No. Better really. now than we have been, but greedy, 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 dude. People want the money and they just don't care about, you know, it's big corporations. It's all about the bottom line. Corporations always trying to get a little dime. Always trying to save money. Overfishing scares me too. Overfishing, that's a big one, huh? There's no fish left in the ocean. And do the fish, this might be a dumb thing, but do fish clean the water? Um, Certain organisms do, I I think. I think some of them do, right. Like a lot of the bottom feeders, I think. Yeah, they can help clean it up. I think it's more the plant life. That really cleans it up. True, maybe. the plants, the living plant. Yeah, and maybe yeah. there's probably stuff that can't be filtered or cleaned. You like know? there's certain like uh, I wouldn't call them snails, but there's stuff that like cleans the coral, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, and there now there's there's dolphins or it's either dolphins or whales that are just showing up dead on the shore by whales. Me. But, yeah, or, or yeah, in Seattle they have a big problem because there's no salmon left. Especially uh, they like build the dams and the salmon can't come back and yes. spawn. And then the killer whales are just skinny and don't get enough food and dying off. Yeah, and I know a couple of people that do the fishing in Alaska mm-hmm. over the summer and there's a lot of contaminated salmon. Yep. And the salmon aren't swimming like as frequently. And that's big. It's big. It's big. Big bear. We're not doing good. No. Uh, I don't want to... Sw- Switch it so drastically, but I did have a question for you, and I'm sorry if this is too much, but you know how they have a lot of, so, like, I've done, you know how they're doing all these gene therapies for, like, RP and LCA and all this stuff? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think one of the companies is called Lexterna is one of, like, the trials. Mm, Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor, the Joker. Lex Luthor from Superman? No, it's Superman. Oh, shit. Um, but, but have you ever gone for a gene trial to see if you could be a candidate or can you not be a candidate now because it's been too far gone? I can't cause I have other things on top of RP. Oh really? Yeah. Coats disorder, which is really what took my sight. The so blood, the coats blood it- vessels ruptured in my eye and covered my retina. So the coats did it, not the RP? It's both. Because they said the RP, like if it was just the RP, didn't they tell you you might be able to see till like 40 or something? Yeah, depending. I don't know how bad it would be. Yeah, who knows the age, but Did mine they... was pretty bad still. But then the coats really is what took my vision quickly. Did <clears throat> they find the coats with the RP when they diagnosed you? Um, Where did that come later? Maybe a little later. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because I didn't go for so long to the hospital until it started getting bad. And then that's when, oh, I guess that is when I found out. Because my vision got really bad. What is maybe le- they knew about it? What is leather coats disease? Leather coats. I just told you it's the blood the, vessels that oh, rupture. Oh, the rupture. Okay, okay. And the they're immature blood vessels, which immature blood vessels tend to leak. Were you born S- premature? So those no. So those blood vessels will leak blood into the eye, and that covers the retina, which you can't get out. 
Oh, okay. So my doctor was saying, because he was, he did the RP, does the RP stuff at mm-hmm. U of M, the gene testing and stuff. And he's like, you could maybe, if you wanted to do that, I was like, well, don't I have the coats? And wouldn't that be, even if you'd fix the RP coats? He's like, oh yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> you told him? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Shout out to Dr. J. Dr. J. Jai Sandera. Great doctor though. He did the Argus 2 implant. I've talked about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're going to have to do another one eventually. What? A implant, right? Or no? Oh, no, I'm saying the chip. The Argus 2 is the chip they put in their eye to give you vision, like a little bit of like light perception and stuff. Yeah, have I... Have you heard of that thing? No. It's like an actual chip they install in your eye, and then it's like, you know, sends signals to the retina and stuff. Because I remember my grandpa like got uh, MAC degen, which is a very, like, easier disease to deal with, I guess. But they were putting shots in his eye. Mm-hmm. That I got would, those, yeah. You did? Mm-hmm. Did it help at all in the beginning? It helped, I think, slow down the, the yeah, process. The process of the coat. It helped with the coats. Because, uh, yeah, I remember him getting those and then being able to see like a little more on the line. Mm-hmm. But it did. I think also it just slowed it down because he's pretty low vision now. Yeah, mine would suppress those blood vessels, the immature blood vessels. Is it the blood that's blocking your vision mm-hmm. and they can't get the blood out? Because mm-hmm. you can't like take out your eye and drain that. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Yeah, I can't get deep in there or something. Um, because I I went three different times, and it was a heartbreak every time. Oh, for the Yeah, because they, they even had, there was one huge breakthrough where it was like, when I was a little kid, I remember them talking about it was happening in Italy, mm-hmm. um, big breakthrough with LCA and certain genes of it. And the guy's, the guy was from Italy, and I swear I could be wrong, but I want to say his last name was like Ferraro or something. <laughs> like very, very similar name. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is it. I'm going to see. I'm cured, I'm man. Cured. I, I couldn't wait, Jerry. I was like all for it. I go to the, I go to Philly. I go to all these specialists. I spit in the thing. Uh-huh. I do the gene thing. And then they're like... Uh, couple like weeks later or something they're like oh not the right gene Mm -hmm. and i was like all right whatever pretty hurt pretty beat up about it because i was little and i thought i was about to be cured Mm -hmm. and then i think in high school i went to one more same type of deal the third one it was in me and kelly were together we were living in brooklyn and we saw this huge breakthrough with like sterna lux sterna whatever it is Mm -hmm. lex luther and i was really confident this time because i'm like oh they're having huge breakthroughs and like someone was even referring me or something and i go to this freaking office in uh brighton beach brooklyn and it was all russian BBB. A- everyone spoke russian the doctors were russian i had no idea what was going on it was hot in there there's all these old people waiting for stuff i go in they prop prod at me and then i do the the spit and found out once again, no, no, and bueno. Yeah, but the, that's the problem with LCA is there's like is RP the same where there's like thousands uh, of different genes? Yeah, exactly. There's too many. There's so many variations. And with RP, do you have to have the same gene as the person you're uh, having a baby with? Like, do they have to carry the same gene for it to line up? I don't know if it's the exact gene or. If it's just RP in general, yeah, but yeah, in order to have it, um, well, I would, I always pass it on. You do? Yes. So, so Callaghan's a carrier? No, because it's attached to the X chromosome. In females? For females. So females carry it on, then if I have a daughter, their kid will have a 50% chance of having it. What's the chance of you having a daughter having it? None. It won't. It won't affect them. Really? Because they have an extra thing or whatever that can make up for it. So you didn't. You had no fear of your child having it when you were right. Okay. Did you get tested, or that you didn't even have to? Like, wait, hang on. Let me think for a second. If, yeah, we're good. Yeah, my kid is good. So you wouldn't even had to have done genetic testing to see if he would have it when he was uh, in the womb. Yeah, but I th- can he still have it? No, yeah, he can't. It's only the X chromosome. 
Um, yeah, no, he's safe. Because you have RP, it's called RPX, right? Mm-hmm. He's safe from passing it on and stuff. It's only females. So all of my nieces, they'll have, well, from my brothers who are, have RP, mm-hmm. have a, are going to have a 50% chance of their kid having RP. But none of those females, none of your nieces had a chance of getting right, RP. Of being affected by it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, mm-hmm. that's actually really interesting. Because for me, in order for my kid to have it, Kelly would have to be carrying the same exact gene of LCA, mm-hmm. which is very minuscule. I think that may be true. That would be true if Callaghan's mother had the gene. Of RPX. Because she would have that X gene too, where it would be a 50% chance of whether or not he gets my X okay. chromosome or her X chromosome. And here's my question. <laughs> if you were... Say say she was a carrier and you both knew that. Would you get the genetic testing when she was pregnant to see if, if he was going to be blind? When she was pregnant? No. Thank you. I don't think so. Is that George? Um, oh, it could be George. I should check. I should check real quick. That's true. Um, because the doctors, they tried to really push the genetic testing on us. I don't know. Um... The doctor's really trying to push the genetic testing on us, and we said no. For that, I wouldn't. But for I yeah. think for other things, I would want to know if it's like spinal bifida or something yeah, yeah. really intense, like because those types of things they could potentially fix in the womb, yeah, which sucks because like it's that. an invasive surgery and stuff. Yeah, that's kind of a scary thing to think about. Yeah. You'd hate something to go wrong. I also, um, the but problem- blindness, yeah, I wouldn't really worry. About, I'm not worried about that. That wouldn't deter you from having a kid either, like if your kid could no. potentially be blind. Because I know a lot of people that won't have a kid mm-hmm. because their kid could potentially. It so. would, yeah, I'd feel <laughs> like shit. Wouldn't be cool. Yeah, to w- keep passing it on. I don't. I'm not stoked about the idea of continuing to pass it on. But yeah, but the other thing I think is like, if the slight chance my kid has LCA, which is like very very minuscule, they have the best teacher. You know, yeah. like. It does suck, though, because I remember the depression I went through and stuff like that, like, feeling that. Mm-hmm. It's just... not a cool thing to pass on to your kids. No, <laughs> we're fucked. <laughs> yeah, but... so I think my kid might be- become a carrier of LCA, of the gene. Okay. And I then if, when they have a kid, if, if that person if that has pers- it, too. Yes. Right, right, right. So it is, like... But it's so... So they're going to have to start putting that on online dating profiles. <laughs> What's, what, do you, what do you carry? What do you carry? Do you have, like, yeah, are you sustainable, like, kind of cancers? I wonder if that'll become a thing. Right? You know? Well, profiles are getting weird because I heard in um, certain countries in Asia, they have a... It might be China. They have a... You rate people's profiles, like social profiles. You rate so, them like they're mm. they have a rating, and if they like do something wrong, the rating goes down. Mm. So like, there's been talk that that would happen here in like years. It's supposed to be like a a self vetting process, or like, what's the idea? It's basically so like, a rating of character, almost. Okay, yeah, which is pretty interesting. It's, yeah, not. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the positives and negatives. It sounds positives. pretty communist. Positives, obviously, you can hopefully weed out some real assholes and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, this dude's whack. This person's whack. But, yeah, you don't want to be rated. It's going to mess with kids' self-esteem like crazy. Because as a kid, you could, somebody you don't like in school, like, you could be bullying somebody in that sense. And just social media is already making kids depressed and, like, so self conscious and and just comparing everything, comparing yeah. everything to everybody else, and you could really use that as a tool that could really probably do some serious damage it, even more now. Yeah, it sucks because there are so Not many good. negatives about social media that I agree with these days. Mm-hmm. That like towards especially kids that are growing up, mm-hmm. but there's so many positives to it at the same time. So it's like a real, I guess, what would Weird. you call it, double edged sword. Mm-hmm. It's uh, that's with anything. It's like when technology came. There was so many good breakthroughs with certain things, and there was uh, people like with anything. There's bad people, so they take it the wrong, like they bring mm-hmm. things the wrong direction. If everything yeah. was just utopian, the world would be perfect. 
utopian. What do you mean utopian? Like a utopian society where people actually use the things that came out like for good. For good. Yeah. yeah. There's always got to be the dark side of things. Yeah. Even the dark web. Good and evil, dude. Yeah, it's so true. Like the yin yang thing. Like it's. it's Hallows your horror cruxes. Huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Oh, we were so it's delusional. A double-edged goblin sword. We dude. were so delusional at what was it like twelve <laughs> when we yeah. started doing that on the bank. Probably we, we were battling tricks, One. and Dan landed his trick, but George wasn't filming. He landed so clean. Trey flipped fakey on the bank, and I was trying heel flip to fakey, and uh, so Dan had to keep going. We were getting the clip, and we got so delusional. That we just started yelling out Harry Potter references before mm-hmm. we went every time. Like, uh... Spectrum Patronus! <laughs> it's Expecto Patronum. Expecto Patronum! <laughs> and like, Levioso. 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 <laughs> it's like Dobby's a free elf. Yeah, everything. I landed you on... You landed yours, on too. Get under the invisibility cloak! <laughs> we started running on our references, and I was... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great. What about... You said the chip that, um... <laughs> that brings light? Perception? Is that what you're saying? A chip? Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while, but years ago it was like you could have, you could put like Christmas lights around a doorway and you'd be able to see that. Or you could see like the outline of a spoon compared to a fork. Have you seen this Elon Neuralink chip? I've heard of it. I don't know what, I don't know, I don't think it has anything with vision. Right? It does. Does it? It's supposed to be able to, but it doesn't make sense to me, but it's supposed to like be able to restore. It works in your brain to where this brain signals can send what you're actually seeing to to your brain, mm. like the your eyes. It, it's very strange, but it seems very invasive. Yeah, I'm not putting a chip in my head. No, I'm I'm with you, but I can't see myself ever doing that. I also wanted to clear. Is up it the, a? Do you know if it go does ahead. the chip go off of what the eyeballs seeing? I think that's what it is. Okay. But I think there's someone that can so you control would, the chip, which is sketchy. You would still need to have vision for that to work. The optic nerve would sure. still have to be working. I'm not sure about that. Or is it a, otherwise it would have to have a camera to pick up. Yeah, it might have a camera. You see, it's really sketchy. And then someone could it's <laughs> all goes to a database. So then like every if yeah. someone got a hold of it, someone could take over each chip. <laughs> that's it's wild. it's really robotic type shit. Yeah, that's like freaking shoot yeah. What is what was that movie? iRobot. iRobot, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not putting Yeah, chip that's in. that's not um even if I was guaranteed to see, I I don't think I could do that. It's just something with the I'm not opposed to maybe like a little chip. It's got my credit card info, and I can just swipe my hand on something. That's not too bad. I don't know though. Not what too you bad. Put in your body there. <laughs> the EMFs, Jerry. I'm not. I'm not against that. Entirely. EMFs. Maybe I maybe just wear a ring with it. Yeah, maybe not in my body. Yeah, a ring that would, would be, be good. way yeah. more. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't need a wallet. Yeah, a then, yeah, then your ring gets stolen. You can't lose the ring. Yeah, can't lose the ring. But very interesting stuff. The vision world. It's very chip. complicated. A chip. Chip in the brain, dude. Yeah, I like my chips with salsa. You're not opening <laughs> you're not opening my skull. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's uh, it but, sounds cool though, like to be able to if you could actually like think about having to look a phone number up on your phone. You know what I mean? You gotta open your phone. Yeah, that's the it. thing. It's if just, you could just, just be like Phone numbers, boom, bam, all in your head, and have everything at your fingertips. It would be pretty incredible. I feel like I was like that before the the woes of life got involved. Like when I was a kid, when all your worries were just like trying to meet up with your friends. I had a phone book in my head of yeah. everyone I knew's phone number. Yeah, I can still recite some of them to this mm-hmm. day. And it's like seven 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 four three one nine. Your brain is less clouded. <clears throat> But this would be like there it would be less crowded because you'd have that all just stored and you wouldn't have to you wouldn't be you wouldn't need to remember you'd have more space for just nothing or other things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you could Google like you were Googling the uh 
Sweetwater stuff, looking up the soundboard stuff. Yes. If, if you could, I could Google just that in your head right oh, now, that would, quick would be pretty dope. That would be dope to be able to be like, all right, I need something. I got to troubleshoot this uh-huh. device. I it's need just, how does it work? Could you be like, what if you're dreaming and you're thinking of <laughs> calling somebody? Is he going to call that person? Very true. Does what happens with off? dreams? I don't know. That's scary. Dreams are. Uh... I guess you must be able to turn it off. <clears throat> but during the day, if I'm just thinking about. Oh, I should call Heather later. And then all of a sudden, calling Heather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know how that works, dude. And then you you can answer calls in your mind. Yeah. Like you just cool. You don't need a phone anymore. Man. There'd be some real positives. You could be a lot sharper. Is there a device that you could think of that doesn't <laughs> exist, like something that would make your life a thousand times easier? Yeah, like some kind of fake vision, like looking for things. Yeah, true. You know, like, where did I put my frick? Where's my water bottle at? Yeah, because a lot of the devices Boom. now, it's just like you take pictures of things and it tells you what's there. Yeah. But you can do real time stuff, but it's so crude. Yeah, it's like doorway or yeah, it's, stairs or whatever. Yeah. It's not right. Yeah. And it's it's no very, problem. there's too many <laughs> bugs. I would say, okay, that would be like stuff. the best thing would be able to just finding crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, exactly. That's the most annoying thing in life is for me is that the amount of time it takes to do things. I hate looking for something where you know yeah. you just had it and then it's it's like right in front of your freaking face. Mm-hmm. I've looked for something for like 30 minutes. That might be an exaggeration, mm-hmm. like 10 minutes. Yeah, it's right there. And, and I, then I break and I ask Kelly. She's mm-hmm. like, it's right here. Yeah. It's and right. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Which most of those little things can be solved with organization, but the it's the ugh, yeah. No, I, I you know you can't stay a hundred percent organized all the time with every single every tiny little thing in your life. No, it's like Nick Mullins was saying: with things that we have to do blind, we have to be perf- like perfect. Yeah. yeah. With like organization, because mm-hmm. most people can have their. They're areas, but then they're able to scan, like, oh, it's over mm-hmm. here. Like, I have a few spots that I know things are. Like, if it's not here, right. it's probably here. Right. <laughs> yeah. But My cane, all my cane cubbies, I guess. Yes. It's either here, here, or here. <laughs> exactly. But now I got to walk upstairs three times to check every spot. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. And then uh, it, it, it does get annoying, but I, I have ingrained in my brain, my mom as a kid, saying, put your things in a memorable spot. That's what she always used to tell me. Yeah. And uh, it has helped, but. That's a lot. One thing I want to clear up, we got to wrap up in a minute, but I want to clear this up with everyone because there's, I don't know if you heard about this, and I don't think we talked about it, but the Mr. Beast thing. Have you heard about this? No. So Mr. Beast, he did an awesome thing. Like, I don't want people to think it's not, um, not a great thing. Mr. Beast is this huge, huge YouTuber. YouTuber, probably the biggest in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's got like 130 million followers, subscribers, and he does a lot of things where he reinvests all his money in what he, whatever he's doing. He doesn't really, he tries not to like make anything off like deals or anything like that. And he did something where, and this is something I've wanted to do, which I still will do in the future when I have the means. Is he went to another country. Uh, people in like third world countries that macular degenerate or cataracts, they had cataracts and it's a simple surgery in America to like clear cataracts to Mm -hmm. cure it. And cataracts, do you know, it's like a thing on the lens, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Of your eye. And it it, is a couple different kind, but yeah, it causes like blind spots and things like that. It's like the leading cause of blindness I around think. the world 100 around the world because third world country is this basic surgery you could have and be cure your blindness it's not they don't have they the don't right have doctors the or the means mm-hmm. and so what he did is he went uh to another country i, I believe it was another country and he cured i think it was like 100 people mm-hmm. from cataracts which is incredible but the problem is he posted it and the thumbnail on youtube was Mr. Beast cures blindness and for a hundred people and people started taking that as all blindness was curable. And that like, like people that don't have the knowledge about, Mm -hmm. you know, how different, uh, how different eye diseases work is that they believed like, Oh, why aren't you just cured now? 
So I started getting like hundreds of messages and comments of <laughs> Mr. Beast help this guy. Like how how is he still like how is anyone blind basically? Mm. And it kind of rubbed me a little the wrong way because he didn't educate people on how that was a specific type of blindness and he's not necessarily curing blindness, he's just removing cataracts. Do you know what I'm saying? I see. Well, he did that as the click the thumbnail. The the clickbait but he also in the video did not explain that any of that, that he, yeah. any of that. So like a lot of blind groups or, or schools and well, people. that's less on Mr. Beast and more on the people who are seeing that video and taking it for what it, for what it is and not actually looking into it and having more understanding. I think that's less on Mr. Beast and more on people who are ignorant to the no, multiple. That's- you know, causes of blindness. That's and fair, things. and I do agree with you there. But I think with that type of platform, you could educate <clears throat> people that millions of people are going to see this. Or, I mean, he had to have had, like, you can don't. Do you have anything, like, no. donate to no, this no, cause no. He paid for, for cataracts it. or anything? No. Yeah, he should have had something like that. Like, hey, you guys can do the same thing. Yeah. You Everyone can cure- donates $5 and cure blindness across the world or whatever. Exactly. Because I want to go into <laughs> third world countries and be able to, because I don't have a curable blindness yet, I want to be able to cure people's mm-hmm. vision loss. Like, it would be really cool and, and rewarding. You know, yeah. But it was a. It, the only thing that rubbed me the wrong way was all these people thinking, telling me cured, like, yeah. like I would have gotten cured freaking yesterday if I could. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm like, I just see that as just another thing of just the internet and people just looking for a reason to talk shit on Mr. Beast, and it's just like it was more the blind world talking shit. Like on I him. did. Uh, was it? I mean, come they, on. No, I know. That's the thing. Well, they were upset I get it. He didn't about the lack of education. Yeah. Because yeah. you have such a massive platform, you could at least educate. Because yeah. you know most of your your fans are younger, too, mm-hmm. and don't understand these things. And he didn't have, like... But I guess that probably is going to come out of that now. Yeah, right? that's true. Is he going to do another video? You think he would do another no, video? No, he or just no? talks about he's getting so much shit. From blind people, but <laughs> in my in my opinion, he's done a video with Pete Gustin. Uh-huh. Why couldn't you bring Pete along to educate, kind of, you know, or like something like something? Yeah. I I think he could have involved a blind person that was uncurable. Yeah, it'd been a good way to do it. I yeah. think so. I, and listen, we all make mistakes, and it's like content is whatever. The guy, he did a good thing. Changed a hundred people's lives. Yes, forever, forever, and it's so. In incredible. my opinion, good job, Mr. Beast. I agree. Yeah, can you? Yeah, now you know a little more. Yeah, I mean, God, you can't keep everybody. Happy. I know it is, but it, that it, stuff it, irks me. That's, it was kind of yeah. funny though, because it was like NFB, like all these freaking the big ones. Yeah, were going the people after were going him. after him, and Pete was pretty <laughs> upset too. Because cause Pete's getting, like, he's big on YouTube, so he's getting yeah. thousands of freaking comments and, like... We should do this. Yeah. Why aren't you Why aren't you cured mm-hmm. type of thing? It's like, dude, yeah. we would be. Blindness is... It's always been like that for blindness, though. You know what I mean? Even the different, like, levels of blindness. Oh, you can see. Like, well, I'm blind. Like, I have a little bit of vision. Some people, you it, know... And it's, it's such like, a spectrum. Yeah, there's so many nuances that people just don't know. And we know as content creators, too, like, that's a great thumbnail. Mr. Beast Cures yeah, Blind. Cures like, I'm clicking that For a hundred people. Yeah, yeah, I'm clicking that thing. But, yeah. um, yeah, I just think education would be helpful because you yeah, are... Be good. To people are learning so much from your content type of thing. Mm-hmm. I have nothing against Mr. Beast, and I think uh, right. I think it's awesome what he did. But I did want to clear that up because I've gotten so many freaking messages that. about this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild. But, um... So, Mr. Beast, dude, I wish you'd do an educational video. Yep. and we'll Come on the podcast. Yeah, come on the pod. Let's clear this up. Yeah, let's clear it up for the blind world. All right, eyes and ears. Um, thanks for rolling with us. We got to eat some chicken dumpling soup. Yeah. Great dinner guests. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Send in your questions. Questions. Get a phone number rolling here. Hopefully, that be uh, that is a good idea. Yeah, I think we should set that up tonight potentially. Sick. Yep. All and, right. Uh, as always, keep pushing and one love. GoPro, stop. Keep pushing and one love from four bad eyes. <laughs>